This video is about our trip to Blunden Island, which is off the west coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Our intent was to camp on a deserted island that we could get to by hired boat. We provisioned for staying on the island for two weeks, but since very little information was available about this island, my son and I were unclear how long we would actually stay. We took enough provisions, along with a satellite phone, to stay for a longer or shorter period, depending on actual conditions on the island. This is a satellite image of Blunden Island. Note that there is a large sandy beach on the southern portion of the island. Based on the satellite image, this was where we intended to be dropped off. The image of Blunden Island can be misleading. It shows obvious beaches, but what it doesn't show is that the rocky sea edges are not passable by foot at any time. This is an important aspect that will be covered later in this video. We live in the Seattle area. This image shows the route we took to get to the Canadian town of Tofino where we would catch a water taxi. The trip from Seattle to Tofino, including a long ferry ride, took us approximately 10 hours, including stops for food. We hired Tofino Water Taxi to take us and our gear to the island, drop us off, and return 8 to 14 days later. The Tofino Water Taxi Company was very good, and I highly recommend them. As you will see, they have boats and highly qualified personnel to conduct the beach landing that we needed. The rate for their service was fair. We arrived at the dock early on a late July morning, but the fog was too thick to leave. The fog lifted enough by 10 a.m. and we traveled around Vargas Island, as you can see in this picture. The total trip time was approximately 45 minutes from Tofino to the Blunden Island area. As a side note, the fog can be intense. The locals call August, Fogust. This is the lower dock where the Topina Water Taxi Company operates from. This aluminum boat with our gear was ready to go. As you can see, the boat design supports rocky or sand beach landings. You should also notice the beauty of the Topino area. The water taxi ride to Blunden Island is shown in this picture. We launched in fairly dense fog and headed around the west side of Vargas Island. The boat trip, in combination of sun breaks and fog, was fun. The trip around Vargas and around the various rocks and sea kelp beds was breathtaking. I wanted adventure and this trip was delivery. As we approached the two Blunden beaches, with the sun and the fog, this scene provided a view that few places on earth can equal. We intended to land on the big beach, but because a large group of teens with truck counselors occupied it, we diverted to the small beach and spent day one and two there. When the tide came in, there was less than three feet from the sea to the forest edge. On the big beach, there was plenty of space between high tide and the forest. As you can see, this scene shows our initial landing on the small beach. The boat was head on to the beach. We unloaded our gear off the front on a rocky setting at low tide. After we unloaded, the driver backed away and left us to our fate. This is another view of the small beach near low tide, just okay. after landing and just after we had moved the equipment to the high tide mark. Here, with our gear moved to the high tide mark, we began to explore our surroundings. It's now mid to high tide and the views in the late morning light are awesome. 
Notice the tide difference in this clip and the low tide in the previous clip. The tide maximum in this video is still not high tide, but is obviously close to the forest edge. Once we had our gear settled, we began to explore the nearby area. Much to our surprise, we discovered that the vegetation was nearly impassable. And to make matters worse, there was no place, even if we could get to it, above high tide, that was level. After exploring the entire small beach, we selected a less sloped area and began to clear it for our tents. It took us approximately three hours. The resultant breast pile was huge. As you can see, the tide has come in and we had finished just in time. This is my son, Miles, and me. The morning of day two was met with a combination of fog and sunshine, and the views were incredible. This scene was taken on the morning of day two, an hour or two after low tide. This is important since, on the morning of day three, we ported all of our equipment around this rocky cliff through knee-high water at low tide to get to the big beach. As mentioned earlier, we found out that the vegetation on the island was dense. Later, according to the locals, we were to find out that it is denser than most of the other jungles of the world. This is very important since it inhibits exploring the island. However, we decided to try and cut a path to a trail that we had heard existed. We worked for approximately five hours before we broke through the jungle and found the trail. This image shows where the trail was and where we had to cut through. The trail cut that we did appears small, but as mentioned, it took approximately five hours. This is why exploring the island in detail is almost impossible. That said, what can be accessed is amazing. Here you see the first time we followed the existing trail back to the big beach. This was a big relief. It was a relief because up until this point, the tall rocky outcrops and the vegetation made it impossible to see the larger picture and we felt pinned in by the large cliffs that surrounded the small beach. This video shows the first time we saw the view from the large beach where we were to spend day three through eight. When we returned to the small beach, after having successfully punched through the jungle to access the big beach on day two, we found that the teen counselors had left us with a gift of red snapper. We cooked this fish over a beach campfire. This meal was beyond belief. As mentioned earlier, on the morning of day three, we moved our gear around this cliff through thigh high water at low tide to the big beach. It is important to note that the trail we cut was not useful for this endeavor as it was far too steep and had numerous tree and cliff obstructions. We ported through the low tide approximately 400 pounds of gear. Keep in mind that there is no fresh water on Blunden Island so our gear included 25 gallons of fresh water. In addition, we had tools and other gear to allow us to build what may be needed. We also had a small gas power generator with five gallons of gas to allow us to keep our laptops powered. This turned out to be quite useful as we really enjoyed the evenings 
watching movies by the evening campfire. The teens and counselors had left by mid-morning of day three and, except for my son and I, the island was now otherwise deserted. This scene shows the new camp on the east side of the big beach nestled within tall cedar trees. Note the table that my son and I made from previously downed timber. It would be great to know if that table we made is still there. This scene is taken from the eastmost part of the big beach where a nice cedar shaded location has been preserved. This is the view that emerges when moving from the new camp to the big beach. Locals say that this location has been used for more than a century to leave the problematic Indian brave to dry out. Regardless, it was a well-protected area with plenty of beach firewood available. Though, in retrospect, camping on the flat spots of the big beach might have been better due to more sun. The teens had departed by midday of day three via a kayak, and we had the whole beach to ourselves. Being on a deserted island with no one but my son and I was a great feeling. This is my wonderful son, Miles, and me. Uh, FYI, the beard is now gone. This scene shows heading further east along a short existing trail from the Day 4 campsite to the furthest southeast side of London Island. As you can see, the view is spectacular. Morning sunrise is something you shouldn't miss, as you will see later on in this video. There are areas on this small rocky beach that have campsite potential. You can see Vargas Island in the near distance. This scene is taken from the rocks on the east side of London via the same short trail from our campsite. This is the same scene as the last, but taken from a point a few hundred yards further north. The long beach of Vargas Island can be seen in the background. We had given some thought to staying on Vargas Island, but reports of wolf attacks made that thought short-lived. However, in retrospect, I later found out that wolf attacks on Vargas are rare and can be avoided by ensuring that food and food scraps are carefully controlled. Still, London Island is too small for either bears or wolves and is a big reason why we chose it. This scene is also shown from the east side of London Island, just a few hundred yards from where we camped. The intent of showing this video is to highlight that there are a few places on really London Island where campsites can be made and that, though few and far between, the interior in small patches is passable. But it cannot be overstated that most of London is impassable. Note the massive moss of ground cover in this area. It is the exception, not the rule. But somehow, Walking through this area was a magical feeling. This scene is taken from the rocky beach area on the west side of London that can be accessed via the short existing trail. It is important to note that no other trails were discovered and that we never accessed more than 20% of London. This scene is interesting because it shows that the rocky outcroppings limit the amount of sea that flows into the Bay Area and, as a result, inhibits wave action. This has resulted in very colorful kelp beds and other plant life. If bugs bother you, Blunden may not be for you. On the big beach, it can at times crawl with billions of some kind of sand bugs. The sand bug population generally resides near the high tide mark. So as a consequence, the beach area within 20 to 30 feet of the forest edge was not nearly so infested. 
On the other hand, the mosquitoes are prolific. They would come out near dusk and swarm the area. This did not bother me or my son that much. For one thing, we generally kept a campfire going, which limited them quite a bit, but we also used bug spray for the interior of our tents. As far as I am concerned, the Blunden bugs were more fun than a problem. side of London Island. As you can see, sunrises on London Island are incredible. On the morning of day 8, the Tofino Water Taxi Company came to London Island to pick us up. After arriving back to Tofino, we unloaded the boat and looked around town one last time. This is a scene from the Tofino waterfront. What a beautiful town and what an adventure. I highly recommend this trip. I do, however, recommend that you take sea kayaks, which would easily fit on the water taxi. This would allow you to see and explore much more of the Blunden Island area than we were able to accomplish on foot. <laughs> 